Get up to rock, get up to burn, stand with the pride and burn for your desire. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Mid Atlantic Mulling League's Dungeon Ball. It is week number six. We're back in, uh, oh boy, it's uh, it's old Division B. <laughs> and it's uh, it's quite a matchup tonight. Tonight we're going to have Apropos of Nuffle versus the Brewmeisters, Clavius versus Malik, Flings versus Chorfs. I got a lot to talk about with this matchup, but first let's take a look at the standings. In Division A, the Dinner Bell Darlings have been knocked out of first place by Donkey Teeth, coached by Dead Fred. A Wood Elf team, 5-0-1 is their record. They lead the Dinner Bell Darlings by a TD diff of just one, but they have two TDs, four on top of them. In second place, the Dinner Bell Darlings, coached by Doug the Minotaur. A Dwarven team, 5-0-1 is their record. In third place, third but definitely not least, Elden Barino's Masters of Mammal. A Dark Elf team, 3-1-1 one one is their record. And in Division B, guaranteed to make the cut, the friendly neighbor Kaiju, coached by Merrick, a lizard team, 5 want to know is their record. 16 points earned in this competition. In second place, boy oh boy, the Mootland Scout Troop, number 079, coached by Artificial Bunny, a halfling team, 4-0-2 is their record. And following behind them in third place, tonight's team, apropos of Nuffle, coached by League Champion Clyphus, a halfling team, 2-2-1 is their record. They'll be up against the Brewmeisters tonight, coached by Malik. A Chorf team, 1-1-3 one, one, is their record. They have been eliminated from the competition, but that doesn't mean they, they can't put on some hurt here on this halfling team. First up, we'll take a look at the home team. Apropos of Duffel is up tonight. They're playing in their stadium. They've got some upgrades. We'll talk about that in just a minute. They have a TV of 700,000 gold. They're coming in with a 11-player roster. They're down a Treeman. They're down a halfling. Uh, the Halfling was level 1. The Treeman was Bomb Tombadil. He's level 2. He picked up uh, Multi-Block. He'll be out today. I imagine that... Uh, I imagine that... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see a replacement. I think we're going to see a Merc tonight. <laughs> He's got two TRRs, one Apothecary, four Fan Factor. He's going to be up against the Brewmeisters this evening. They're coming in at a TV of at least 1620. You see that? You see that? 1620 to 1617 that can mean only one thing that he has gained a point of strength on someone let's see who it is how did he go up 500 or 50k and not pick up a point of strength what am i missing what am i missing <laughs> all right well he's got a tv of 1670 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, nine, uh, uh, 970,000 gold in petty cash will be going back to uh, apropos of Nuffle this evening. He's got, oh, he had two level ups. I see, I see, I see. Two bull centaurs. He's got uh, five chaos dwarf blockers. He's got the minotaur and three hobgoblins this evening. That's an 11 player roster for the Brewmeisters this evening. One cheerleader, one oppo, four re rolls, and four fan factor, and two coach sifts assistants. How do the two teams play tonight? Well, I think this is very much not in, not in Apropos of Nuffle's favor. I think this matchup is very squarely in the Brewmeister's favor this evening. He's got these two bull centaurs. They have an MA of six. One has, uh, or they both pick up break tackle. That's a great pickup on the bull centaurs. That's going to allow them to use their strength of four instead of their EG of two to dodge away. 
Uh, one has picked up the block skill. One has picked up... Is that... Is that catch? One has picked up catch? Uh, I think that's not bad. He's picked up... <laughs> he's, he's picked up catch on Brewmeister Smith. Uh, the Chaos Dwarf blockers, he's got three with the guard skill, two with Mighty Blow, one with Claw, and then, of course, the Minotaur has leveled up to pick up the guard skill and Claw. He has horns, he has Mighty Blow, he has Claw, he has guard. All, or two of the three Hobgoblins have the guard skill. He has Tycum Big Arm, the level four Hobgoblin. He's picked up Wrestle, Kick, and Sure Hands, and he has Fend on Ted, the Hobgoblin. So, the Brewmeisters, right? They've got Strength 4 on the Bull Centaurs. He's got Break Tackle to make them mobile. He's got Mighty Blow on three players. Uh, he's got Claw, which uh, probably won't play a big factor tonight. And then he's got a bunch of Guard on players. So the Chaos Dwarf Blockers, they're probably going to be grouped up. They've got uh, they've got Block. Uh, he'll be taking the blocks. They're pretty resilient. They have a Strength of 3. Uh, Mighty Blow. Mighty Blow is really why I think... This Chaos Dwarf team is going to murder the Halfling team, and here's why. So he does have Claw. He could use the Claw against uh, against the Treeman. So the Treeman have an AV of 10. Claw could will reduce that to an effective AV of 7. I don't think he wants to, and that's because he still has to um, he still has to remove them, right? So instead, instead, what I think he does is he ignores Claw. Don't worry about the Treeman because if you let, let's say you do break armor, you don't remove the Treeman. You say, well. I still knocked them down, and because they have an MA of two, they have to roll to stand up. Sure, but the, the treemen only have an MA of two. I would say just tie up the treemen. They're going nowhere. <laughs> They're going absolutely nowhere. And you go hunt those halflings. Don't worry about claw. You use your mighty blow. You have three players with mighty blow. Um, that is effectively going to reduce their AV from six to five. So the way mighty blow works is you get a plus one on your armor break or your injury roll, whichever one you need it on. The Halflings have an AV of six. That's already in your favor to break armor. That's 58 and a third percent chance of breaking armor. But if you need the extra point, you've now just increased your odds of breaking armor to over 72%. So Muddy Blow against the Halflings, very, very, very strong, I think. And I think he really wants to, to capitalize on that tonight. Um, the guard skill is going to help out to get the assist to try to make those three die blocks that's going to make it all the more easier to get that pal so you can go for that armor roll uh, i think if if malik does that tonight if he just if he just splatters athletes across the pitch i think he's going to get a huge player advantage he'll come out on top tonight uh, i really think it's that simple sure he's got the bull centaurs who are mobile and he can use them as strong ball carriers and, and things of that nature but i really think this just comes down to Mighty blow the halflings, take him off the pitch. If he can do that, I think he comes out on top. And I think Clifey's has a hard time against that. This is just a bad matchup, I get. I think, against uh, or, or for the halflings. Now, Clifey's is going to get a whole bunch of money in petty cash. He's getting, what, 970k. That is nearly an entire team's worth <laughs> of petty cash. <laughs> so he's going to pick up Deep Root for sure for 300k. He's going to pick up his chef for sure for 100k. I imagine he's picking up Zara as well. He could go for Big Bertha. Big Bertha, uh, Bertha is an ogre he could pick up. Strength 5, but being an ogre has boneheaded. I think he'll probably take Zara instead for 270. He'll pick up... So he'll have Deep Root, he'll have Zara, he'll have a Chef. I imagine he's picking up a Wizard as well. Um, and because he is the home team, he's going to have his Altar of Nuffle. He's going to save 50k on both Deep Root and Zara. That's going to bring Deep Root down to 250 and Zara down to 220. That's another 100k that he gets to spend on something. <laughs> so he, uh, I imagine we're going to see a, a Mercenary Treeman. That'll bring him back up to three Treeman. That's where he wants to be. He'll have Deep Root. He'll have his two Treeman. Um, and then I'll have a uh, hundred halflings to run along the pitch. I think his game plan doesn't change here. It's still a halfling game plan. I think what he wants to do is move those treemen down pitch, turn after turn, one space at a time, trying to get into quick pass range. And that's where he can threaten the halfling uh, pass really effectively. Otherwise, it's securing the ball, eking out every square of pitch that you can turn after turn while trying to keep your halflings alive. And I just think it's going to be really hard tonight. If he wants to go in on some bribes, he does have a sneaky get in Carl. Uh, he did pick up block on Drogo, which is a huge pickup. He had to roll doubles for that. So now he has a blodger on Drogo. Very, very good skill to have on a halfling. Um, 
but I don't think <laughs> I don't think it's enough. <laughs> but we'll see. Clive is, of course, league champion. He is an excellent coach. He could pull it out. We'll see if it'll work out tonight. <laughs> Clive is thinking for the bits, by the way. <laughs> so we'll head on over to Cabalta. Well, no, actually, let's head on to Discord. All right, both coaches are in Discord. We'll head on over to Cabal TV and get this week six game underway. I imagine the inducement phase is going to take a full minute and a half. He's got to buy a whole team with those, <laughs> those inducements. I'd be very surprised if we don't see the three trees. Uh, we're absolutely going to see the chef. Um, I, I think we're absolutely going to see a wizard. And uh, I imagine the second star player will be Zara. He'll still have money left over for that. He'll still have uh, 200... 250k left over. <laughs> if he picks up Deep Root, a chef, Zara, and a wizard, he has 250k to spend. <laughs> um, Malik here against his halfling team, if he focuses that mighty blow uh, on those halflings, he's going to have a really good shot at removal. So, at AV6, he's got about a 25% chance of a removal per armor break. Mighty Blow is going to bump that up significantly to about a 1 in 3 chance to armor break. So I really think he, he doesn't want to worry about the trees. Often we can see coaches, they have Claw, they say, I'm going to leverage Claw against that high AV player and try to remove him from the pitch. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Um, and he could try to do that. Again, he, he could see the trees as a threat. If he gets rid of the trees, there's no there's no halfling fling, right? There's no halfling toss. So that could be an option for him. But I really think he's... With so many players with Mighty Blow, I think he stands a really good chance at just removing halflings perhaps every single turn, right? If he gets three blocks off, <laughs> odds are he'll get a removal. <laughs> Still waiting for the inducement phase to finish up here. I'm. I don't know what Clefie is going to do with the other 250k. I have no idea. He could pick up some journeymen, maybe. I imagine I would go for bribes. I'd pick up a couple of bribes, and just because I would be. I would think that the Chorf team is going to try to murder me, so I'm just going to try to murder him back. <laughs> Here we go. SP Beaver says halflings are friendly, not murderers. I beg to differ. All teams are murderers in Blood Bowl. All right, so the chef's going to pick up one reroll from the Brewmeisters. It's going to bring him down to three. Three rerolls a piece for each team here. It looks like the Brewmeisters are setting up an offense. Actually, it looks like they're setting up in defense. Apropos of Nuffle did pick up the wizard. They have a plus one fan advantage this evening. Brewmeisters picked up a babe. What? <laughs> so they picked up a babe. Uh, that means they give up another 50K. So apropos of Nuffle, they did pick up Deeper and Strong Branch. Oh. Oh, oh boy. They picked up Deeper and Strong Branch. They did not pick up Zera. You know who they, you know what they spent that 250k on? Morganthorg. Strength, six. Has block, has mighty blow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and of course he did pick up the mercenary, Willow Strawberry, the number four Dreamin. Oh, good gracious. Oh, that's that's just lavish. That's a lavish inducement. 
<laughs> All right. Two treatment on the line currently. Not, uh, not the Merc. All right. All three trees on the line. Meisters with both pool centaurs in either wide zone. They have all three hobgoblins in the secondary. They have that Minotaur in the linebacker position. They want to keep him mobile. He is a wild animal. If he's not blocking or blitzing, then it's going to be a four plus to take his action. Otherwise, it's a two plus. So you will have to be careful with that. Putting that Minotaur in the linebacker position betrays uh, uh, Malik's strategic intention here that that Minotaur is going to be the blitzer. Kick. Oh, yeah, let's go. Let's go. The weather's going to change to a blizzard. Great kick here for the Brewmeisters. So now all GFIs are going to fail on a one or a two instead of a one. Three die block to get things started against the coast of Mr. McKenzie. He gets the pal here. Look for a 10 plus. Does have Mighty Blow. Breaks armor. Can't say stun on the ghost of Miss, Mr. McKenzie to get this game underway. SPV or with the emergency GFI warning. Hank the Ranger asks, hey, so GFIs will fail 1,800% of the time. Yep, that's how the math works. Gets another pal. This time on Ho Hosehead the Dog does not break armor. Final block on the line. Third pal here for the Treeman. That is the I, We know who's playing. We know who's playing. <laughs> there we go. Good block. Takes a mark on the Hobgoblin. We're going to see a Mork Blitz. Yes, we are. Three die Blitz. Gets the knockdown on Ted. He won't be able to follow up if Fend is used. I imagine Fend will be used. Doesn't break armor. Still has a point of movement left with Morgan Ford. Moving forward to Mark. Brewmeister Smith. Brewmeister Smith, Mark, but he does have break tackles, so it's going to be a 2 plus to dodge away. Thought GFIing was scary before, man. Try it in the snow. Try it in the snow. Why does that keep happening? <laughs> Stop showing the title. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Strogo, the uh, blodger halfling back toward the ball. Goes for the three plus pickup with Asphodiel, the number three halfling. Works out. A touchdown for Asphodiel. Level them up. Turn one now for the Brewmeisters. Yes. Brewmeisters take a mark on Longo, the number eight halfling over in the right line zone. That's a. Uh, it's a hobgoblin with the block skill. Makes him a little more resilient. Also makes him uh, a much more effective blocker. So if he dodges away Brewmeister Smith, which I imagine he will, I wonder who he's going to put in the way of Morgan Thor. He might actually try to blitz Morgan Thor. You can see Morg's in a pretty good position. Takes a mark on Carl over in the left wide zone. And takes a mark on Gorbulus, the number seven halfling in the left uh, in the left wide zone as well. Yeah. 
50 seconds to play in turn one. Here's the Blitz with the Minotaur that we were talking about. <laughs> he tried to GFI. It's a three plus in the snow. He says, no, sir. And that'll be a turnover. Tried to GFI in the snow. <laughs> Just fell right on his back. Apropos of Nuffle is going to move this ball up to their own 14 yard line over into the right yeah. wide zone. Thank you, Ranger. Lower the GFI failure rate from 900% to 99%. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> you lowered it to 198%. <laughs> Two die blocks gonna get the knockdown on Brewmeister Smith. He'll follow up here. Minute 15 in turn two for Apropos of Nuffle. They still have their Treeman blocks to take. If a treatment is ever free, you will absolutely move the full two spaces. That's double the movement you normally get. Deep root, strong branch here. To move a space, take a block, follow up. Decides not to follow up. He wants to lend the assist. There are three defensive line. There are four, but one is prone. Here, I'll get rid of these. Three defensive linemen here. One is prone. So Deep Root will be lending an assist on the line. Moves Ajakar, the number 12 halfling back. He's going to try to get the assists to get the block on Ted. Here it is. Two die block on Ted. Ted does have the block skill. He's going to take a block on the line first. Gets a pow against Hosehead the dog. Mighty blow in play. Doesn't break very much. It's a pow on Doug McKenzie. That's four times less. Nine plus if you were to fail it and needed it. Oh, try to dodge. Fail dodge, and Gorbulus is going to be injured over in the left wide zone. Didn't get his block off over in the right wide zone. That'll be a turnover. Failed three plus dodge. He had the free reroll with the dodge skill. Takes a mark with John Elsinore. Mark. Three day block out of here, but got triple push out of it. So that's the follow up. Took the block before standing up players. Probably should stand up his players first. He's standing up Brewmeister Smith, but not dodging him away, it looks like. Stand up Blitz. Three die Blitz. Dodge push, frenzy follow up into a three die. I imagine this is going to be a push here. He doesn't want the both down result. Has to follow up due to frenzy. Two die block with Ted here. This works out due to the block skill. Well done. Didn't break armor. AV6, it's a 58 and a third percent chance to break armor. Um, if you do break armor, you roll on the casualty table. One of three things can happen to you. You can get stunned, you can get knocked out. Or you... What? 50-50 dodge. All right, didn't work out. 
Um, you can get stunned, you can get knocked out, or you can get a casualty. Um, there's a 58 to 3rd chance that you get stunned. That's a, if you roll a 2 through a 7. There's a 25% chance of getting knocked out, and there's a 16 and 2 thirds chance of, uh, of uh, getting a casualty. For removals, you're just looking for a KO and above, so that would be a 41 and 2 thirds chance of a removal after you break armor. Three die block on the line against Gene Rosie LaRose. Gets the knockdown, doesn't break armor. And all the trees are likely to move forward. Got two spaces of movement, deep root. I try to go after Claude Elsinore here. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Three die block gets the pal. Can he get a 10 plus? He cannot. Now this frees up Morgan Thor to take his block on Brewmaster Smith. Apparently a two die block. Maybe looking for a way to make a three die block. Two die block gets a push here. I'm very surprised he hasn't stood up Longo yet. He might be trying to dodge Longo away. <laughs> the Ranger said, I thought Deep Root died. What's going on here? This is um This is his brother. They were named the same. Very strange family. Very strange family. Decided not to dodge Longo away. Wow, what a dodge. Two three plus dodges to get the one die block on Ted. Can't follow up here. It'll probably push here, I imagine. Yes, indeed. Sets up for the surf on Ted the Hobgoblin. Wow, <laughs> what a move. What a move to get that block. Now he'll dodge here. Good dodge. And that'll be the turn. Turn three, back to the Brewmeisters. Their defense has been getting pretty cleanly picked apart here. So he has a group over here. He's got a player over here. And then he's got the rest of his team here. Um, it can be very difficult to mount a an effective defense when your your formation starts to break up. Gets a KO on Advocar though, well done. A two, that is two. Two man player advantage for the Brewmeisters now. This gives the assist for the two die block on Longo doesn't break armor, but gets Ted off the sideline. Problem with these dwarves get like, this dwarf in particular getting picked off. They only have an AG of two. They don't like to dodge. He would like to get some of these dwarves on these halflings, though. Uh, that tackle skill will negate the dodge skill. That would be very, very useful. Two die blitz on Carl. Gets a pal here. He's looking for that seven plus. Breaks armor. Doesn't get the removal, got a stun. Still has plenty of movement left with the ghost of Bob McKenzie. Two spaces, in fact. He takes a mark on Drogo. Drogo to the left of the ball carrier currently. I 
and he decides to stand up with Doug McKenzie, who's in one space back. Still has Hose Head the dog, who is prone. Still has the ghost of Mr. McKenzie. Still has Claude Elsinore and Jean Rosie LaRose, all prone currently. Good break tackle dodge. To move Brewmeister Smith, still hasn't stood up his prone players. Six seconds to go sends Tycom Big Arm to safety back into the uh, right wide zone as well. Very, very far back. They are currently on their own 20 yard line. Whoa! He's trying to dodge these guys out from the trees. These are 50 50 dodges. He succeeds with Hosehead the dog. Oh! He succeeds with Gene Rosie LaRose. Can he do it again with the ghost of Mr. McKenzie? My goodness, Nuffle is kind. Three successful dodges. He doesn't have anywhere to go with Claude Elsinore, but he might stand him up. In fact, like a wager he would. <laughs> ha! 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 Tried the dodge. Five plus dodge didn't work out. That'll be a turnover. Turn four for Avco of Nuffle. SP Beaver says less hits that way. Uh, sure, but now the trees can move freely. Uh, you've doubled their movement. Um, I would say if you're dodging out the, the dwarves, that's fine. Try to get them to mark uh, the halflings, though, so you can leverage tackle. Breaks armor on the Minotaur. Morgan Thorg. Old Morg. Gets a stun on Getty Lee. SP Beaver says, I like the play. Forces the trees to follow and risk rooting. Those trees will play, take blocks anyway. I, they're always going to risk rooting, in my opinion. I'd rather not give them the movement. I'd rather hold them to a space. Plus, they're in great position. They're dead center at mid-pitch. Like, they, they're still... They're still viable. Ball's going to cross the line of scrimmage over uh, to the Brewmeister six yard line in the right wide zone. Yeah, number four here, the mercenary treeman. He's going to eat up more pitch. Marches down to the uh, 10 yard line. Good eye block on Ted. Gets a pal, can't follow up. He's an eight plus, didn't get it. AV7 is pretty brittle. It's a 40, uh, 41 and two thirds percent chance of breaking armor on AV7. We often talk about how AV7 is brittle and AV8 is sort of normal. The, the difference between the two is is pretty significant. AV7, what did I say, 41 and two thirds percent chance. Uh, AV8 would be a uh, just under 28 percent chance of uh, breaking your arrow. So there's a big, big difference. Twenty-five seconds to go for Apropos and Uppel. Remember, they still have a wizard hidden somewhere in the stands. Two full spaces of movement with Deep Root Strong Branch. Covers the ball carrier. That'll be the turn. Turn four. Back to the Brewmeisters. The Brewmeisters defense torn to shreds here. They've got players all over the pitch. We'll see if they can group them up uh, and, and mount, a, mount a defense and try to get at this ball. Good. He could go for the he could go for the bull centaur blitz on the ball carrier if he wants to risk a GFI. I don't know if he wants to risk a GFI on the blizzard. He'd have to. He could get uh, John Elsinore. 
Let's see, that'd be two three fourths and one die blitz unless he gets general storm here, which he can't. Oh, he's just gonna do it? He's gonna do it without the mark? So he takes the one die blitz, it'll still work out. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Gets a knockdown of the ball, scattered to the left. There's really no favorable place that ball could have scattered. So John Elsinar could have come up here, removed this assist, and made this made this here a two die block. It's a two plus go for it. It's a it's a three plus go for it. It's a one or a two. <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> so risky. So risky. And, and even uh, deciding to make that a one die block instead of a two die block, too. 20 seconds to go. Still has players to stand up. I don't think the Brewmeisters really want to get super aggressive on the ball here. I, I think they just want to murder halflings. <laughs> just. Just beat up halflings. Take a mark. Forget the trees. Take a mark on these halflings. Start beating them up. But he's gonna get. He's gonna. He's gonna go for a one die on Willow Strawberry. He got the pal. He needs. He needs an eleven plus here. That's a. That's not even a three percent. But we'll see if he gets it. Not break armor, but the treatment have an enemy of two, so to stand back up, they've got a roll of four plus at the beginning of their turn. Second quarter begins here for apropos of nothing. They do have a wizard on deck. I imagine uh, the ghost of Mr. McKenzie here is <laughs> about to get punched in the nose. Three die block with one assist. I'll take the two die block instead. Didn't want to risk a dodge. Gets a push. Lots of dwarves tied up in this tree. That's dwarves that are not not beating up halflings. These halflings are are so easy to remove from the pitch. Stands up Asphodia, the number three halfling. He was the ball carrier before he Took a horn to the face. Three die blitz by Morg in Thorg, or just Morg really. Gets the push on because of Bob McKenzie. Still has some movement left with Morg. Three plus ball pickup works out. Ball in the hands of Mungo now, the number nine halfling. Touchdown will level them up. He's going to move into position into the safety of the cage with Deep Root, Strong Branch, and more two star players on the front of the cage. <sighs> Failed the three plus dodge. Couldn't get the free reroll on this due to the tackle skill, so he's gonna spend the reroll. Fails it again. Fails dodge, loses a reroll, and gets KO'd. Three man player advantage now for the Brewmeisters. SP Viewer says, Why the dodge before the stand up? What stand up? Did I miss a stand up? Who needs a stand up? tree oh. oh uh i don't know i don't know did he spend his blitz already if not maybe he was saving it for the tree i don't know
Brewmeister's defense all over the place here. Can they make something happen? Their players are dispersed all over the pitch. Malik, carefully considering his options here, has under a minute to play. He's going to... He got the knockdown on Willow Strawberry. Now he's going to move over to Deep Root Strong Branch. But Deep Root has a strength of seven, unlike the other treatment that have a strength of six. Takes a stand-up two-die block. It'll be a dodge push on Mungo unless he re-rolls this. He was removing the assist from Deep Root. Oh, it's not going to be a dodge push. He has tackle. Well done. Well done by Malik here. Six plus catch. He doesn't want to re-roll this. It's going to scatter one space to the right. Again, there's no real favorable place for this to scatter. He would probably have preferred this ball scattered in the hands of uh, Deep Root Strong Branch than out of this cage. Two die block with the ghost of Bob McKenzie. It would be a both standing result or a dodge push. He's going to go with a dodge push. Oh, didn't follow up. Didn't follow up, so this is now this is now a one die block. It's gonna be a both standing result. Who's taking big arm into position back into the safety position in front of the ball? Ball currently on the Brewmeister's eight yard line in the right wide zone, but lying on this snowy ground. Five seconds to play in turn five. There's plenty of pieces still to move. He's keeping John Elsinore in a position to score. We'll try to move these, uh, these dwarves in a position. They're very slow, so he's got to move them as far as he can. There it is. And that'll be the turn. Turn six, back to apropos of nothing. Three turns to try to score. They've got to recover this ball. Good stand up at Willow Strawberry. I can't imagine he will risk a GFI. Not in the snow. Two die block by Deep Root. Gets a push. Hunt, it's got to be on the ball. <laughs> we'll see what this ball scatters. Wow. <laughs> scatters the ball one space forward to the 10 yard line. It's now to the left of Morg. Two-die block on Claude Elsinore gets a push result here. Let's see if he follows up. If he doesn't, he's probably gonna he's probably gonna try to surf Ted. Yep, stand up blitz to surf Ted. Just needs a push out of this one die block. That'll do it. Well done. Well done. And now it's a two man player advantage. Two. <laughs> Good gracious. What a what a play by Clypheus to remove two players from the pitch. My goodness. Finally takes root with Fearbeard. He's going to stay put, but he'll take a block. Three die block. He'll get the pal here. Man. What a great combo to surf. One man player advantage now for the Brewmeisters. That's one surf. Here's two. So well done. So well done. Good three plus pickup. By his Fodiel. Just two turns left. He's going to have to end this turn in score. Or he's going to have to end next turn in scoring position. So he's going to have to end on the 10 yard line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. He's going to have to end on the 12 yard line next turn. But uh, he doesn't want to be there. 
<laughs> he wants to be on the 16 so he doesn't have the GFI. Might try to be tossed by Deep Root. Deep Root does have a strong arm. In fact, all the tree men on this team do. We might see the Brewmeisters try to make sure that Deep Root stays marked. Wow, that's a lot of marks. <laughs> He's coming in on this cage. Does he have a plan to bust the cage? Might try to blitz with the ghost of Bob McKenzie coming in the back right corner of the cage. Maybe. Maybe the back left corner of the cage, but that is a blodger that he'd have to go. Wow, all these players being tied up by a treatment. That's a that's quite a dodge. <laughs> that's a dodge into three tackle zones. That's gonna be a six that he needs to roll after the three plus GFI. He succeeded on the GFI, failed the dodge, doesn't re-roll it. <laughs> the bull centaur is gonna be stunned. Second tree man, the Merc, Willow Strawberry is gonna take root. More can take a block. More can take a blitz. A reposition maybe. And then he could start Chuck, uh, uh, Clyphus can start moving, moving halflings down pitch pretty freely. He can get some good protection on the ball as well. He's going to take a block with, uh, Deeper Strong Branch first. He'll get a push. Still needs to get Morg out of the way. We're going to take a blitz on the same player. Three die blitz. Gets a push again. Might not follow up because he wants to. Yeah, he wants to reposition Morg to defend the ball carrier. Maybe moves Morg up to the 18. Going to move Morg up to the 20. So he's going to move another halfling up to the 18. Ball carrier is going to be in the right wide zone. He's going to set up a half cage here. He's going to move another halfling to the 16. Where's the uh, where's the second halfling go? 18, I imagine. Yes, indeed. So that's the one going to the 18. We'll have one going to the 16 yard line. Well done by Clapius here. One free, or one, not free, but one player left to action. It's going to be a three plus dodge. Failed the dodge. They get to spend a reroll here because dodge was negated by tackle. Failed the reroll. Thankfully, Drogo's not going to be removed from the pitch. Turn seven for the Brewmeisters. Two turns left to try to stop this score. I am not I am not sure what the play is. I am not sure what the play is. You could blitz with the Minotaur, but it's a it's a GFI blitz. And you're not getting at the ball carrier. The best you can do is take a mark. It might be the play. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Three to stand up. That gives him two points of movement. And then uh, he'd have to spend a th uh, another. Oh, he's going to go for it. So it's three plus. Failed the GFI. He's going to spend the reroll. Got the three die blitz. But all he's going to get out of this is a push. Pushes him to the outside. Has to follow up. Now it's two die block. It's another push. That. That Minotaur can't stay in place due to Frenzy. He's going to come off the ball carrier. Could have pushed the other way, but then that's a that's a terrible second block. Yeah, that's, that's why... 
other than GFI. That's why I, I oh. Mintar friend, or Mintar Blitz is scary. Looks like he's going to take a mark. What? What? All right, so he moves the bull centaur forward. Two GFIs works out to his sure feet. He's going to take a mark on Mungo. And the ball carrier, for what it's worth. Thirteen seconds to play for the Brewmeisters. Takes a two die block against Longo. This will work out. Well done. He's gonna try to GFI. No, he's just gonna take a mark on Morgan Thor. Morg's gonna. Oh, Morg's gonna beat him up. <laughs> well, he might not actually risk the block with Morg because of Loner. Final turn, apropos of Nuffle. They have one reroll left. We'll see how risky they're feeling. It's a three plus dodge to score. He's gonna get a free reroll with dodge. He knows it's a free reroll, so he might try to take a block with the one reroll he has remaining. I'm just gonna dodge the score. I think that's that's the play. Well done, Apropos of Nuffle. We'll take the lead in this ball game, one to zero. You eat your turkey, Lee. You deserve it. One turn left for the Brewmeisters here, unless there's a riot. Apropos of Nuffle, let's get back two halflings, both of their knockouts. SP Beaver, thank you for the bits. Brewmeisters aren't going to score here unless there's a riot, and then they could potentially score. Brewmeisters with two rerolls left, they're leaving one reroll on the table. Apropos of Nuffle putting all of those really strong players on the line. He needs to put three on the line, that's exactly what he's going to do. Why put halflings forward? Is he afraid of the riot? What? 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 I would put all, all of these guys back on the end zone. <laughs> What's... Is he just showing off? <laughs> He's just saying, come at me, bro. Come on. Come on. What are you going to do? I'm not scared of you. of Nuffle with no kicker. <laughs> All right, he's going to play. He's going to play real D here. <laughs> Five man offensive line for the Brewmeisters. I don't think that's Can he get the blocks that way? He's going to have to do the math here to get the blocks. Let's see, he can get 4 He can get a one die. He can get a one die on like Willow, maybe. Or even a one die on Fearbeard or something. I, I don't know if I'd go after Deep Root. Can he do better? Five. Six. Oh, yeah, he can do better. He can get a two die. He can get a two die. He can get a two die on Two Treatment. 
and then blitz a blitz a half of them. Guards are really guards are really strong. Guard means you're gonna you'll you'll assist no matter whether you're marked or not. Brewmeisters with <laughs> three back to receive. <laughs> Brewmeister is playing for the riot here. They've got two players in the left wide zone. Here's the kick. It's a high kick. Brewmeister's. Wow! Very shallow kick. It's in the hands of John Elsinor. It's not going to matter, though. <laughs> wow! <laughs> did he set up to get the three die block? He did not. Well, he did. He did not. Or the two die block. So he only has he only has one die here. So he could have set up the Minotaur here, and then got two assists to make that a two die, and then move the Minotaur in, and then he'd have four. Yeah, he's got enough guard for it. Yeah, he's got enough guard, so he could have a player here, player here, Minotaur, or a player here, player here, Minot. Player here with guard. Player here with guard. Mintar is here. Takes the block. Follows up. Then he has uh, another player with guard here. Uh, and then takes the block. And uh, you get another 2 die with full centaur. Well, it's currently in the hand of John Elsinore. He'll probably pass that ball for some SVP. He's gonna go for the blitz, two die blitz. Gets the pal, or gets both down, but it'll get the knockdown. Gets an injury in Advocar. That's great. That's a great removal. Back to a three man player advantage, I believe. Nope. It's a new. It's a. It's a, a new drive. <laughs> so let's see. He can get five, six. One die frenzy. I don't think that's worth it. He's not gonna pass the ball. Oh, he is gonna pass the ball. Gonna try. Hey, hey! 50-50 catch works out. Well done. Gets a point of SVP on John Elsinor. I think that's gonna be. I think it's gonna be the drive. Unless he wants to risk moving. Oh, he's going to take the one die on deep root. Wow, scary stuff. It's he got a stun out of it. That was with Claw, so uh, he just needed an eight plus, uh, needed a seven plus to break armor. Claw and Mighty Blow. It would have been an eight plus, but uh, Mighty Blow. In play, made it seven plus, and that'll be the half. One to zero, apropos of Nuffle in the lead. The Brewmeisters will be on offense here in the second half of the game. They've injured two halflings. But it's still gonna be 11 v 11 on the pitch, I believe. Again, the chef only steals one reroll for this half, so it's three for each team. I think the Brewmeisters will be very happy with that. Apropos of Nuffle setting up their defense here. So you're going to keep three trees on the line, group tightly together at mid pitch. You can see they're putting Fearbeard in the middle because he has the guard skill. That means he's going to lend an assist for both Deep Root and Willow Strawberry. playing around with their defensive options. They have 40 seconds left. Looks like they're going with 
Uh, a column in either wide zone, but he's shifting this around. <laughs> Moving the columns in tight. Tighter, I should say. Giving up the sidelines. Alright, electing to go with no safeties. I think that's a fair a fair bet here. These cast orbs are not uh, not really known for being a passing team. Also, by not having safety, so halflings are not particularly fast. And MA5 is not great. Still faster than dwarves, but only by one space, by one movement. So keeping him in tight, he keeps them in play longer. Four man line for the Brewmeisters. Still has these guard players shifted off to the left. Not sure what the plan is. Blue Centaur in the left wide zone. One in the halfback position. And Minotaur is the uh, tight end on the right side of the line here. All right, here's the kick. It's a high kick. Blue Meister's just going to get an opportunity to pick this ball up. With whom shall he pick it up? Tycom Big Arm, I have to imagine. Yes, indeed. Going to try to catch this ball with Tycom Big Arm. The, uh, the level four Hobgoblin. 50 50 catch. Whoops, 50 50 catch works out. Ball on the Brewmeister's own 24 yard line. Turn nine. Remember, the apropos of Nuffles still has their wizard. Oh, takes a mark on Morgan Thor. Going for the two die blitz. Gets a push. He might. Ugh. I was going to say he might chance the reroll here. Into the uphill ball. Oh no, does he re-roll this? He is a loner. Oh, rolled into skulls. That's why I thought he might chance the re-roll. He got the push. He he, uh, he pushed into an uphill block. Chance to re-roll with the pushes. Uh, didn't do it. Pushed into an uphill block. Rolled into skulls. Got through the loner roll on the re-roll. Minotaur got stunned. Turn nine back to apropos of Nuffle. Three die block on Gene Rose of the Rose would be a push. A follow up with Treeman. Merc Treeman moves forward. Two die block by Fearbeard will be a push. And a three die block by Deep Root Strong Branch will be a knockdown. Looking for a 10 plus. It's plus one on the armor roll if he needs it, but uh, rolling a four is not going to cut it. Takes a mark to get the assist on the ghost of Mr. McKenzie. Also keeps him locked down by having a mark on the other side of the player. There's nowhere that he can dodge. There is a dodge over here that's a positive dodge, but uh, the uh, dwarf is just an AG2. All right, two die block. Gets the pow. Can he get the 10 plus? Cannot. AB9 is really, really, really tough to break. It's, um, uh, AB9 is uh, 16 and two thirds to break. Um, but then you need to, 
Then you need to make the, the injury roll, and that thick skull just makes it really hard to remove them from the pitch. Oh, three die more blitz. Rolls a push here. Probably not gonna spend yeah, probably not gonna spend the reroll since Forge the Star Player, he is a loner. There's one more space of movement. <laughs> here he comes. <laughs> Brewmeister is going after these the, the really strong players again. I think I think going after the halflings would uh, serve them better just to get uh, a ton of removals. Part part of the game right is uh, uh, eleven players can that's eleven that's eleven tackle zones that are being exerted. And if you can remove four, five, six of them, uh, the defense just they don't have enough players to cover the entire pitch. Turn 10 for the Brewmeisters now. Very good point. I think Ranger says, especially against Clypheus, who's a pitch control coach. It's very, very true. Clypheus uh, uh, likes to play his team. We talk about, uh, actually, we just talked about this in the latest podcast episode. You should check it out, episode 30. Uh, what makes Blood Bowl fun? But uh, one of the things that makes Blood Bowl fun is just uh, how much freedom you have to, uh, to play the game your own way. And uh, the way Clypheus likes to play his teams is as a pitch control coach. He likes to leverage his players to just eat away chunks of the pitch um and he'll just he'll he'll carve out sections of the pitch and and deny you access and this is uh this is it's been very effective for him all season long even last season some coaches are good at exploiting holes some coaches uh uh, really like are, are very good at, at focusing their skill ups on players developing a kill team it's a stun on uh, Dina dust the number 13 half lane here who's the ghost of Bob McKenzie one space to the right over in the right wide zone needs to keep protection on this ball carrier Morgan throw Mork has an MA of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I imagine he won't go that far. He'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. Mark failed. 50 50 dodge. Gets a stun on Gene Rosie LaRose. Dodging away from these trees. Um, I think, personally, I think the trees should remain tied up. And just force those trees to take those blocks. Turn 10 for Apropos of Nuffles. Still have that wizard, that menacing wizard. A wizard hidden somewhere in the stands. Once per game can cast a spell. One of two spells in this version of the game. Either a fireball or a lightning bolt. If it's a fireball, it will... It will affect a 3x3 three three grid of your choosing, such as this, for example. And every piece in that 3x3 three three grid, whether friend or fro foe, will have to roll a d6. And a 4+, plus, they're going to get knocked down and have to do the whole armor roll shebang. Um, otherwise, you can cast a lightning bolt. And the lightning bolt affects just one space on the pitch. And uh, whatever player is in that space has to roll a 2+, plus or else get knocked down. You can use your wizard either before your turn or after your turn. It's a very, very powerful inducement. Here comes the blitz. Blitz on Ted. No, he's going to take the blitz on John Elsinore. He's going to get in front of the ball carrier. Gets the knockdown. 
A follow up. Good injury on John Elson. We're going after that How Goblin. Oh no, he's going to lose an AG. That might be the end of his career. The Apple's going to get spent. Can the Apple save him? He can. Sort of. <laughs> John Elsinor is going to miss next game. Next week is week seven. It's the final week of regular play. So that is effectively the end of his career. <laughs> and then takes the mark on the ball carrier. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Two points of movement. That doubles, double, a, you know, if a treatment's marked, he's uh, moving one space unless he blitzes. By not being marked, you're doubling his movement. And those treatment are so scary at a strict six with mighty blow. Not just that, but they have stand firm as well. <laughs> Three assists for the foul against Getty Lee. AB5, he needs a six plus here. <laughs> oh, the only oppo's been spent. Sorry, Getty Lee. I love Rush, but I guess I guess their time is over. <laughs> SB Beaver, thank you for the bits. <laughs> Ciao, Knight, welcome to the stream. <laughs> Failed three plus dodge here, spends a reroll. Oh, he's gonna stay alive. Just an AV of seven. He will stay alive, but that ball's gonna scatter. Onto the Brewmeister's own eight yard line over in the left wide zone. Apropos of Nuffle, turn 11 now. Three die block against Cloud Elsinore will be a push. 100% follows up here. Indeed, he does. He has a rooted tree in Fearbeard, but he's at dead center, so I don't think he minds too much. Wizard's still on deck. 1 to 0 the score for Apropos of Nuffle. Apropos of Nuffle, currently 2-2-1. Two, two if they win this game, they will stay in third place. They'll be a point behind the Mooton Scout Troop. Next week is week seven. It's the final week of regular play. After week seven, the top two teams from each division will advance to make the cut, and they will play in a single elimination bracket to determine who the Dungeon Bowl champion will be. The Dungeon Bowl champion will advance to the Blood Bowl in the upper bracket. The runner-up will advance in the lower bracket. The Blood Bowl being the championship tournament of the season. of Nuffle trying to descend on this ball. They op open up a hole with Morg. They're trying to funnel these slow halflings through. Takes a mark on as many of these uh, low AG dwarves as he can. These four halflings back to set up some columns in front of the ball. Wow, really, really good defense here. These columns means he is controlling all of this pitch here and even with a single blitz a, uh, a rogue runner still can't get through gonna pick up the ball no i thought he was gonna pick up the ball with morgan thorn here decides not to gets morgan in front of the ball good movement with the, the mercenary treeman Takes a mark on Doug McKenzie. Turn 12 now for the Brewmeisters. 
Boy, that's a pick up that's a pickup attempt, alright. <laughs> that's a pickup attempt for that ball. Morg with a strength of six. I don't uh Well, he could try to take the block. What a risky block it would be. He does have big tackle on on uh, both pool centaurs. So he could bring in the assist with Brewmeister Smith. He could uh, try to blitz with the ghost of Bobby Kenzie, but that's just 5v6. So it would still be an uphill block. Every point of strength in Blood Bowl is is uh, much more valuable than it seems. It's not really linear. I mean, it is literally linear. But oh, he's going to take the blitz on Dina Dust instead. Gets a push out of this. But uh, it's a strength of three. If we consider a strength three average, then a strength feed versus strength three block. That's a one die block. One assist will get you the two die block. Now let's consider your opponent, the defender, is a strength of four. You have a strength of three. That's a, oh, good 50-50 pickup with Tyke and Big Arm. He's got, he's got to dodge away from Morg now. Still has his reroll. But where does he go? Does he dodge and try to pass? Good three plus dodge. He is going to try for the short pass. 50-50. He's going to spend the reroll here. Morg's not going to intercept the ball. Good pass! Good reception! Wow! Really well done here by the Brewmeisters. They've got the ball in the hands of Brewmeister Smith, but those columns by Clypheus, he had his defense in position. Now, he, remember, he has break tackle. We might see him try to run for the end zone here. He does. Well, no, we won't, because the blitz has already been spent. SP Weaver, thank you for the blitz. Uh, for the blitz. <laughs> thank you for the bits. <laughs> oh my goodness! What? Oh, what? Took the two dodges. He would get break tackle on one of them. Didn't need it on the first one. Got it on the second one. Brewmeister Smith now on the opposing 12 yard line. Yeah, yeah, you're getting lightning bolted, sir. <laughs> Ball's gonna scatter on the, on the, on apropos of Nuffles 14 yard line now. My goodness. Pure madness. Pure madness. That pole of Nuffle in the lead here in the final turn of the third quarter. Looking to recover the ball. Two die blitz by Morg. On the ghost of Bob and Kenzie gets the towel. Doesn't break armor, but he's gonna reduce the ghost of Bob McKenzie's movement in half. It's gonna cost three MA to stand up. Good three plus pickup with Asphodiel. Now the ball in the hands of Apropos of Nuffle over in the left wide zone. They are on their own 10 yard line now. And they are gonna try to pick off this defense. Good, good pocket for the ball carrier set up. Two die block with deep root. It's gonna get the knockdown on Hose Head the dog. Doesn't break armor on these very resilient orbs. Two die block with the Merc. Gets another knockdown. Breaks armor this time. Gets a stun.
imagine we'll see the assist on Ted. We'll get the two dive lock on Ted. There it is. Two dive block coming up on Ted now with 10 seconds to go. And get the knockdown. Just needs an 8 plus here. Doesn't get it. Good block. Can move Mungo if he wishes. And he will. He'll move Mungo back a number of steps to mark the ghost of Bob McKenzie. Well done. Turn 13. Fourth and final quarter of this game. The Brewmeisters have lost control of the ball. They're down 0-1. to one. We need to find a way to recover this ball and try to score just to draw. So he tried to dodge in for Mike Smith on the ball carrier right through the right through the cage. Needed a six that didn't work out. Turn 13 for Apropos of Nuffle. They're going to run this ball full speed down pitch. They're going to cross the line of scrimmage. They're now on the Brewmeister's two-yard line. Drogo. The blodging halfling on the front corner of this half cage. Three rerolls remaining for Apropos of Nuffle for the game, none for the Brewmeisters. It's very favorable for Apropos of Nuffle. Uh, the difference between having a reroll and not having a reroll is absolutely huge in this game. Again, the, the very easy example is uh, with a coin toss or the 50 50 chance, a four plus die roll. There's a 50% chance you succeed and a 50% chance that you fail. But if you have a reroll available, you've now changed a 50% to a 75%. That is, a, that is an enormous difference. And so when you're able to chew away at your opponent's rerolls, and they have none left. Now, all their odds calculations are significantly different, and that can very much impact the actions they take, the action order that they take. Good, blah, uh, good blitz by Mork. He's going to get the stun. He's going to move forward. He's going to use that massive strength of six to chop down dwarves. Wow! Breaks armor with deep root strong branch. Gets a stun on Doug McKenzie. Destroying this defense. Two very good stuns. And now this frees up Willow, the Merc. Might move Milo, uh, Milo? Might move Willow here. Nope, he's going to move Mungo there instead. Fair enough. He'll want to, yeah, he'll want to get to the other side of this uh, hobgoblin. That's what he's done with Carl. And this is what we're talking about when we say pick off the defense. He's he's plucking away the defense here. You can see, you know, there's a defensive player here, 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 here. All these players. These are on the wrong side of the offense. Clive is, uh, this is his MO. This is how he plays the game. Two dive block on Longo gets a push. Boy, 
Things getting very desperate for the Brewmeisters here. Doesn't seem to be any easy way to get this ball. We get a push on Carl here, the number five halfling. Follows up and is now given up a, a one die block back at Tycom Big Arm. Tycom level four, but does not have block, does not have dodge. Takes a mark on Dinidis. He's at the rear of the cage. Sends the Ghost of Bob McKenzie down pitch. Perhaps as a potential receiver in case he gets his ball back. He's going to have three three turns to try. It doesn't look like he's going to do it on this turn. Fail the dodge with number six. Four plus dodge. That'll be a turnover. Turn 14 for Apropos of Nuffle. They're going to move the ball five more spaces down to the 10-yard line. Well, down to the 12 yard line, really. Two die block on Tycom Big Arm. Now they can move the ball forward and uh, try to surf Tycom Big Arm here. Not going to do it with the ball carrier. He's going to do it with Isumbrus the Fourth. Pushes all he needs. Well done. He's going to surface level four Hobgoblin. Good removal by Clypheus. When you're looking for a surf, you don't need a knockdown, you just need a push. Three die Morg Blitz gets a push on Ted of the level three hop. Lots of movement left with Morg. He's going to stay put and sets up a tight cage, a four point cage here at the uh, at the opposing twelve yard line. Strong branch makes a menacing mark on the number 16 hobgoblin. And this uh this defense turned offense all grouped up. Well done. Even the tree men are in on the action. Penultimate turn here for the Brewmeisters. No rerolls left. If he wants to stop the score, he's he's gonna have to put his faith in Nuffle. Forty-five seconds have passed for the Brewmeisters, trying to figure out what they can do, trying to get this ball back. Good dodge by Ted. We'll get back in front of the cage. It's still giving up the, uh, still giving up the sideline. Ball carrier still not in scoring position. I would argue, normally he would be, but in the snow you don't want to risk uh, two, three plus GFIs. Dwarves are so slow. So slow. It's It can often be difficult to try to keep them in position turn after turn. Especially if they get knocked down. With an MA of 4 on a dwarf, if you get knocked down, it's going to cost 3 MA to stand. Oh, he's just saving. He's saving his bull centaurs. He's not even going to bring them into the game. Plus three MA to stand up with an MA of four. That means if a, a dwarf gets knocked down, there's only one MA of movement on the on the turn where they stand up. Turn 15 for Apropos of Nuffle. The path seems pretty clear here. We'll take a blitz on Ted, and they'll advance this ball to wherever he sees fit. More blitz. Here it comes. Three die blitz on Ted. Gets the knockdown. He's going to push Ted out here. Well done. Move 
was more off the sideline. He's going to move this guy into position here or here. Yep. And now he's got a, a very nice little protective pocket for the ball carrier. He'll park this ball on the 22-yard line. Very well done by F12 Nuffle. We'll see if the Brewmeisters go after the ball carrier. And if they do, how hard they've been praying the Nuffle. It's going to be a whole, a whole lot of die rolls. <laughs> Actually, he could just stop it right here by going here and here. All right, all right, give him the chance. Give him the chance, give him the chance to roll some sixes. <laughs> Dude, I block him, Doug McKenzie will be a push. Going for the foul, four assists on the foul here. Got a KO, good removal. I believe that'll be the turn. Final turn for the Brewmeisters. The only way to stop this score would be to roll a bunch of sixes and then hope the block dice work out. And then hope one of the 17 halflings doesn't pick it up. He's gonna do it, let's go. Oh, he's gonna go after Drogo. Oh, he's gonna get the knockdown here. Can he get the seven plus? He's looking for a casualty. Doesn't get it. Fair enough. Let's see what else he even tries to do. Probably tries to dodge someone away. Well done. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised he didn't try to run that dwarf away even further. Failed dodge with number five. That'll be a turnover. Final turn of this ball game. Apropos of Nuffle has a reroll. He's not even got a chance. It scores and will win this game two to zero. Very well done by Clypheus. for the hits. Two to zero, the final of this one. Uh, apropos of Nuffles, go oh. <laughs> apropos of Nuffles gonna stay in third place here. John Elsador, the MVP for the Brewmeisters. Morg, of course he's the MVP. <laughs> That's five SVP lost for Apropos of Nuffle. They held on to this ball for the vast majority of this game. It calls two casualties, one death and one KO. SPP for the evening, wow. Seven SVP is being lost for Apropos of Nuffle. They're just picking up six. It's going to be on Asphodiel. The Brewmeisters are going to pick up uh, nine SPP for their part. Uh, and we'll take a look at the schedule before we leave. Oh, these halflings, man. <laughs> Next up, we have a game this Wednesday, August 23rd at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, the CTC minus five. That's going to be the Masters of Mammal versus the Arendelle Icebreakers. El Numerino versus Chime. Dark Elves versus Norse. That'll be a fun one. El Numerino in third place. He is fighting to try to make the cut here in the Dungeon Bowl here in week six. And uh, after that, we've got one more game left to be scheduled. And when that game gets scheduled, you'll be able to check out and get alerted to those schedules on our website at mammal.club. That's M-A-M-L dot C-L-U-B here on Twitch or on our social media pages on Twitter, Mastodon, and Facebook. You can listen to our podcast, Mammal Talk, in your favorite podcast app, and you can also watch previous games on our YouTube channel. Man, this game's so fun. Play Blood Bowl. Why aren't you playing Blood Bowl? You can play Blood Bowl via Blood Bowl 2 and Blood Bowl 3 on Steam, or if you prefer, you can play it in tabletop form at your friendly local game store. Until Wednesday night at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, take care, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your Monday night.